Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you to be here. And first of all, thank you to Politecnico Torino, and Professor Profumo and Rossetto and Calderini that make it happen, as we say, uh, in, in starting uh, an initiative like the IP Finance Institute. I would like to share with you uh, some insights and some issues we have identified in our day-by-day uh, -day activities, both from the business point of view and uh, uh, academic or scientific point of view. We can say that intellectual property today will play an important role in this economic downturn, essentially for three things. The first one, IP increase the economic value of the organization that owns it. The second one, patents and brands attract investment and funding. And the third one, invention are worth more if are patented, the so-called premium. If you patent an innovation, you can get a premium from 40 to 50 percent. But, and then we start the insights and the uh, issues. Uh, I will use this framework just to sort out the complexity. Uh, we have three stages, essentially, very sim simply framework. We have the asset creation phase, we have the protection phase, we have the exploitation phase. There are many issues around these stages. In the asset creation phase, the two big issues today are the asset value and the asset quality. I will talk later a little bit. The fund allocation and the innovation policies that help to create this type of assets. Protection is a clear legal arena, a very complex part. Um, there are many, many issues to work around this. But let's go to exploitation, which is really the core and the heart to our institute. You can see exploitation in two ways. The first way is to use the IP assets uh, as a strategic uh, uh, support or in embedded in the business. The other way, the exploitation is to use the asset for, to generate revenues, direct revenue generation, and the third one is really uh, manage the asset to, to get findings. So I will focus more on these latest two parts uh, even if strategic use of the asset is extremely important. Asset creation, very quickly. This type of asset absorb enormous resources. Uh, you can see on these slides, uh, countries are spending, overall government plus uh, uh, corporation are spending between 7.5 to 12% of GDP in, uh, in, in this type of asset, R&D assets, uh, brand assets. Uh, uh, know how assets, uh, organizational assets, and so on. Um, big numbers are, are in the game. Uh, this what, what happens? What is the fallout with these big numbers in terms of IPR rights? We have over six million, over six million patents in the world, uh, over 16 million trademark in force. And the other one, uh, the other interesting number is today in Europe, the so-called creative industries producing 500 billion euro of IPR. So it's, it's big, big numbers in, in, in the game. But as I mentioned in advance, quality of the asset is extremely critical, extremely critical. Investor looks from the quality. And you can see that quality today is the issue since only a small fraction of patents are really valuable. And uh, we need to improve the quality of patents, both in the generation of patents, but also in, in terms of uh, really release the patent uh, and, and the, all this so-called application pro process. Let's, let's go to the IP finance instrument landscape. How the financial industries is using this asset to generate funding. You can see on this slide many of these instruments. Um, we practice practically all these type of uh, instruments. I don't want to enter specifically in the instruments. What I can say, um, I'm in favor, and it's a personal view, and I, we had a lot of discussion around this, in the so-called asset-based lending, using the asset to get lands. And today is extremely important since uh, the company in the downturn crisis, they do not have cash flow forecast. 
sometimes to justify lending, they need to enlarge the asset base. And uh, key intangible assets are very good assets to focus uh, from the lending point of view. Uh, there are many stakeholders in this uh, IP finance uh, practice uh, or uh, research lines. Stakeholders are, uh, some are involved, some will be involved. You can see financial institutions, companies, trade associations, government, uh, research center, IP professional, many of these. I will go briefly on four or five of these um, stakeholders by identifying the issues we have seen working day by day with these stakeholders. Let's take, let's start with companies, large corporations. The main issue of large corporations today we see are the portfolio management, what we call active monetization processes, and risk management, but also to have a reasonable size of the portfolio. Portfolio size is critical in terms of uh, valuation and quality. And most important is the linkage between the IP strategy and technology strategy with the business strategy. This is one of the key points where uh, chief executive and uh, chief uh, IP council and chief technology officer are working today, how to integrate really these, uh, these two phases of the business part and the technology one. And also, obviously, the compliances with the new um, the accounting uh, uh, rules. Small medium enterprise is a completely different movie in some sense. Uh, first of all, uh, they need to be aware, but also they need to have the, what we call basic IP management uh, uh, culture and, and skills. Um, in Torino, the Camera Commercial and other trade associations did a great job in building up awareness. Um, and we see that now is the second phase. We, we need to, to build up the basic culture in managing the asset. They need to use the technology intelligence more and more. Uh, we have seen patents uh, which are very, very weak since the, all the upfront technology intelligence was poor, and also use the IP uh, to raise funding, which is one of the critical points today. Last but not least, communicate the hidden value. This, this, this is another one uh, key point. This is an interesting uh, um, survey that the Economist Intelligence Unit did in 2007 and um, about uh, the perception of the executive about IP. And there are three phrases here. Executive don't believe their company are extracting the full value. The shifting is from legal or litigation point of view from to managing and enhancing the value. And the other one is companies are making improvements, but we need to move faster. You can see. Uh, Europe is 70% uh, of the executives say we don't exploit the value, but the other uh, in, uh, in Asia Pacific is higher, North America is higher. Emerging market is an issue in IP, in IP anyway for many reasons. Uh, financial institution, um, we have worked extensively with financial institution all around Europe. I think the key points were we have to focus in terms of research is really full understanding of the IP asset economics. The institution, they need to understand the economics of these assets. But also they need, and this is a demand of the institution, they need to know what is the market potential, where the assets are, what sectors, what technology cluster, where to allocate funding. And obviously upgrade the risk management practices, you know, rating, uh, uh, this class of assets, this new class of assets is, is extremely uh, important from a financial point of view. I leave you other considerations from time constraints, but just universities, um, obviously full understanding of IP asset economics, and I think communicate better to the financial business community the knowledge they have. 